Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my warehouse space. This time I'm going to take you along as I build this kind of specialized cart thing for my spray foam packing machine. This video is sponsored by Surfshark and I'll tell you more about them later on in the video. Let's get started. So the machine's not here yet, but uh, a drum is pretty standard size. So let me show you my rough plan of attack here. So a 55 gallon drum is uh, 22 and a half inches wide. So I'm going to go with like a 23 inch diameter just for my rough layout. So two of those inside of here. Yeah, I'm going to make this out of a piece of angle iron. So uh, it'll have a little bit of a, a ledge to sit on. So this area I'm figuring at 24 inches on each side. And then I'll have another piece of angle on either side that will you know, put another ledge on this side to support this side of the drum and then I'll have a space between those two pieces that I can put a post on the front and the back. The back one will be to hold the control box and the front one will give me a place to mount the little gun holder so everything is nicely self-contained. So if you saw my trailer build you see my rotisserie stands. This is the uh, angle I'm going to use some more of this stuff. That's three by three by a quarter inch wall thickness and I still have a good amount of this stuff left. So I have these two nine foot sections left that I'm going to use for this project. And then I have a lot of other steel and stuff back here, but I'm gonna grab a piece of two inch tube and that's going to be the uh, upright for that uh, post thing. <laughs> the post for mounting the gun in the control box. So I'm gonna pull the, the steel out. I'm gonna get cutting all my frame parts and uh, I'll go from there. I'm going to get the saw out in the driveway so it's a little bit easier to use and start chopping the parts up, getting everything at least roughly fit up and ready for some welding. So while I'm getting these frame parts cut to size, let me tell you a bit about this video sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark is an app that allows you to truly surf the internet and access things online as if you were in any country in the world. What this means is that if you're unable to access a website based on your location, because the website isn't available in that country, you can seamlessly change the location with Surfshark. So for instance, if you're in the UK and you want to watch Parks and Recreation on Netflix to see what Ron Swanson is up to, you can easily change the location settings in your browser and it'll be just like you're watching Netflix here in the US all without having to actually leave the UK. <laughs> also, Surfshark offers a host of security features to its users that is not automatically provided when utilizing a public Wi-Fi connection. Surfshark provides a secure and reliable VPN, protecting your online identity, maintaining your private information just as that private, and giving you real-time alerts when your passwords or email is at risk of being hacked. With Surfshark, you're able to enjoy the internet as it was intended, fast, secure, and unencumbered. You can use my code PROMONA to get 83% off plus three extra months for free. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out for yourself. There's a link in the description down below. Thanks, Surfshark. Okay, all the outside frame pieces are all uh, cut and well prepped and ready to go. and. Uh, it would be nice if that uh, woodworker guy would stop putting logs on my welding table. Yeah, I think uh, maybe I'll scoot this log over. So that takes care of the main frame. Next, I'll go ahead and cut and put the two cross members in here, which are going to have that lip on there to support the barrel on the left and right side, and be a good spot to attach the uprights, which will hold the uh, control box and the, uh, the gun holder thing. All right, so now we can drop in these guys so you can see a barrel be able to sit here and be supported 
on the, uh, the corners there. So I'm just gonna get this lined up. That doesn't need to be super perfect, just holding the barrel. <laughs> it's pretty good. All right, let me get it tacked in place. So this is a piece of the stock that I have for the uh, posts. So I'm gonna use that as a spacer in here, something like that. As I'm getting this other piece in here, let's double check. Up perfectly. All right. Let's pack this other guy in here. All right. So then this will be able to stand up in here like that or something. That'll be perfect. Okay. Now to give the casters a little bit more uh, mounting area or somewhere to put another bolt, I'm going to put these little gussets in the corner here. And these I just saved from the, uh, the offcuts from mitering all these pieces. So, you know, nice reuse of some material. So we'll get these things into the corners and then uh, we'll see where we go from here, I guess. We can go ahead and get some casters installed here. I am uh, turning them on a little bit of a bias here so that I'm not drilling through the weld area. Just marked out here. And last time I used the mag drill, I mentioned how that uh, on drills over a quarter inch, you can't use it on the mag drill because they're too long. So stubby bits, a little short guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and start drilling out the quarter inch holes with the mag drill and then enlarge them up for the bolt holes. And then uh, get these captures bolted on here and we should have like a rolling frame thing, which should be pretty sweet. I guess I also need to use a stubby bit on the quarter because I can't get it out of here. <laughs> ah, all right. <laughs> Let me get this thing out of the way. Still too long. <laughs> How short do they expect these drill bits to be? Okay, I was able to sneak it up in here past the, uh, the flats that are on those bits for more torque or whatever. So, remind me to get even smaller stubby bits. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. So either remind me to get shorter bits or to get like a one inch thick plate to act as a, act as a riser for this thing. Ugh. See uh, if this thing rolls. And if I can find a spot in the driveway here, it's not it's totally destroyed by a skid steer. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> okay, now that we're working on this side, the next thing I want to do is add some. Uh, hook or attachment points so I can secure the barrels down into the thing here. So I have this piece of angle iron. I'm going to slice off some maybe quarter inch or three eighths inch thick slices and then weld them into the corners. So I think I'll just put uh, four for each drum, which is probably more than is needed, but should give some flexibility into the future. Okay, 
Okay, now the only thing left to do is put these uprights in, and um, these are just as they are scrap right now. The length, I have no idea what's going to work out best, so I'm just going to leave them long for now and get them welded in place, and then I can always cut them down to whatever height makes sense. The one in the back is going to be longer since it needs to put the control panel above the drums. The one in the front can be lower since it's going to hold the, uh, the gun when it's not in use. That's pretty good. So that is pretty much it as far as the majority of the cart goes. If you haven't noticed already by the outfit change, it is the next day. The drums are here. So let's see if we can get some drums in here and see how uh, that goes. I might have to put the drums on a little bit of blocking since the bolts for the casters might be in the way. I think they might be just out of the way enough, but uh, we shall see. Let's drop some drums in here. So I'm now looking at the control box and mounted on here. Uh, this post is probably going to be a little bit short. That's a side effect of using things that are scraps. So if I were mounted kind of on top of the post, it'd be like this. And I want it to be higher so you can remove the drums somewhat uh, easily without having to mess with moving the control box. So I could probably mount it up somewhere in this range. So if we turn it around so you can see what that's going to look like. Oh, something like that. So I think it's going to work out all right because this box isn't very heavy. So it doesn't need a whole lot of structure behind it. I have this off cut from the, uh, the fenders on the trailer. So I think I'll cut a backing plate that will attach it to attach the control box to it. And it's welded to the pipe or the post or whatever. So I'll have maybe three inches of overlap between the upright and the plate. And I think it's going to be plenty. So I'm going to cut this piece of plate to length drill some mounting holes in it and then weld it to this post and we should be pretty good to go on having the control box up in the air and out of the way. So I have everything hooked up and one of the last things I'm going to do is a little bit of cable management back here. So I think I'm going to make some more of these little things here with the angle iron. So I have a place to hook zip ties and kind of clean things up back here a little bit. And then in the front, I have the, uh, the hose holder thing. So I'm just going to mount that to this post, just drill a hole for it. Um, I'm just going to leave this post tall because I'm going to mount this down here because uh, I don't feel like cutting it and it doesn't really make a difference if it's too tall. So uh, pop a quick hole in the front here and then uh, weld on some little tab things in the back, tie things up a little bit, and this thing should be ready to go. So having the whole spray foam set up be really self-contained in one single cart like this has been super nice with transporting it. Uh, when I was doing the packing back in my backyard, it was nice to be able to kind of move this thing around a little bit so I could get uh, you know, things reconfigured. And being here at the warehouse, it's also nice to have it on a separate cart so I can move it around as I'm reconfiguring the space to get things set up in the way that makes the most sense. It's also gonna be really nice when it comes time to change the barrels because I can just wheel this thing out more into the open where I can get to it with the forklift, change the barrels and just roll it back and get back to work. So it's gonna be pretty nice. One of the things I wanted to kind of illustrate with this video was the, uh, the idea of making mobile bases for things. 
I know a lot of you are woodworkers and I know when I was setting up my woodworking shop, uh, a big kind of hurdle for me was mobile bases for the tools and machines that I was buying. Uh, I guess a lot of times it works out okay because things are kind of uniform and things kind of fit each other, but you get some kind of oddball ones where you have a piece of machine, machinery which is heavier than what you could find a rated mobile base for. A machine that has a weird base that's not maybe square or rectangular, does not fit on a normal mobile base, uh, you know, things like that. If you kind of branch out into the world of welding a little bit with just some basic welding skills, you can make yourself a mobile base for really just about anything. And a mobile base for a machine like that in reality is a pretty easy project to make. So if you're looking for a beginner welding project, a mobile base might be a good way to go. And in my case, I did the wheels on the bottom kind of approach, but if you want a lower profile, very easy way to do that is to undersling the whole thing by putting a second piece of angle iron kind of facing towards the top and mounting your wheels so that, and that would allow you to have a much lower ride height, keep it close to the ground, unlike this, which raises it up, you know, six inches or so. So that's going to do it for this one. Thank you again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Uh, this is a fun, quick project. It was nice to do something quick, something super functional, and something that like just kind of worked out really nicely. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about, uh, I don't know, whatever this place is, the warehouse, <laughs> or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. I'd also be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.